At 721 now, there were plenty of inspirational stories at this weekend's annual tower climb and run to benefit the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. One of the most touching stories has to belong to our next guest. She's here. She's Lisa Goldberg. And she was told a few years ago that you would not live to see today. Sure. You would not live to be interviewed by me. Right. What's that all about? Um, basically, um, I was born with cystic fibrosis. I was diagnosed probably by the age of one. Mm. Um, had, I think they, when I was diagnosed, my parents were, you know, I was my mom's third child, so wow. it was a surprise. And I think at that time, there was a lot of education that they had to tell them. They didn't know what it was. And I think back then, the lifespan of someone with cystic fibrosis was in the 20s. I think today, in 2012, it's in 38. But I remember growing up, my dad and my parents always saying that the doctors were telling them that I want to see the, the, my 25th birthday. Oh. Well, I've already passed that. Um, so probably, I just, this whole event of cystic fibrosis has been a very roller coaster ride. Um, I was pretty much healthy growing up. You know, I, I think the first time I was in the hospital was when I was um, in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget that time. This a uh, you know, normal, uh, every three months we have to go to the hospital to get checkups, make sure that uh, our lungs are doing good. Yeah, I saw you Saturday morning and you told me something. You're going to have to refresh my memory. Okay. But uh, you, something to the effect that you were in the hospital for years. What was the story you said? I, from fifth, I was in fifth grade. I think I was eight or nine. Uh -huh. Um, from fifth grade all the way up to my sweet 16, yes. I was in the hospital for my birthday. Every was, single time. Every single oh. time. And it was kind of, a, it, it kind of just happened that way. And then it started being a tradition and everyone's like, oh, that's so bad for you. But I loved it because I got so much extra attention spoiled at the hospital. <laughs> that's so. good. That's good. Um, Monica mentioned a while ago, uh, you are a double lung yes. recipient. Yes. Transplant recipient. Yes. Um, I pretty much, as I was getting older, 2005, I, you know, we go in the hospital, everyone has it differently, but for me, I was started getting very ill, and probably from 2005 to 2007, pretty much lived at Woodford Hall Medical Center. Mm. I would be in there for three weeks, get out a week, three weeks, out a week, and it was around the holidays that I was in the hospital, and, uh, they basically had told me that if I didn't, you know, if it continue the route that I was going in, that I wouldn't see another Christmas. And so, you know, it was told that I need to get a double lung transplant. And my comments to them, as everyone's crying, including my military father, who mm -hmm. I've never seen him shed a tear in his life, <laughs> um, I knew that it was serious. Yeah. And my words to them were said, let's go. Let's do it. Let's do it. And you call them the, your angel lungs. I do call them angel lungs. Um, I haven't had the, the blessing to meet the family yet. Mm. Um, so I kind of... Would you like to? I would love to. That's, you know, something that I think would fulfill the whole experience and love to get to know where um, my donor came from yeah. and all about her. Um, the first year, I didn't know anything back. The laws were different when I had my transplant. I had right. to have to give the family 12 months to yeah. grieve and do what they do. And um, I found out afterwards that she was in her 40s mm. and that she was a female and that's all i know and it was weird because i always thought it was an angel it's an angel that's yeah. who i that's who i responded to and when i found out that it was a female it was even more yeah. heartbreaking and kind of made the whole experience for me even better because i it, yeah. you know it is a girl and it's angel yeah. so yeah. what was the tower climb like for you we were out there on saturday i mean as we mentioned 950 steps to the top but what was that whole experience like this is actually my second year i did it last year was my first year after my transplant that i did it um so this year i kind of last year was i didn't know if i was going to be able to make it i did it in high school growing up and yeah. it was my dad was joking with me, telling me, I remember you when you were in high school and you were going on the 30-something eighth floor and you were sitting down crying, telling me you couldn't make it. Oh, wow. And now you're like up and walking around. So it's just a very, um, once you get to the top, kind of I feel closer to her. Oh, and I go yeah. out there and talk to her. I told my, yeah. I put my Facebook, once I get to the top, I'm going to blow you air kisses and oh, give you hugs. Nice. So I was out there and it's kind of a special moment for me to like feel 
that I'm closer up into the sky with her. So. That's really nice. Well, we saw some of the pictures there, and uh, it's just thrilling to have you here. It was so great to meet you Saturday. You look great. So now on to 35 and then 45 and after that, right? That's right, and I'll be there next year. Hopefully my dad's, my dad and my best friend yeah. was like on competition, so. <laughs> oh, here we go. Gonna, yeah, it's going to be a bigger thing next year. Well, you look great. Uh, keep up the good work. By the way, quick shout out, Booker T. Washington. She's a teacher. She's got to go to school now. <laughs> yes, so I do. So thank you for coming in this thank morning. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. Okay, 727.